Welcome to another episode of Clan Mythology. Rapunzel by the Brothers Grimm, 1812. Once upon a time, on a farm, there lived a farmer and his wife, and they dreamed of a child, but they couldn't have one. Every day, a farmer would go to his field, and his wife, she would gaze out the back window of the cottage onto the fairy woods. And she would dream of a child. And one day, she saw a beautiful Rapunzel plant in the fairy woods. And she started to think, what if, what if the magic Rapunzel could make me pregnant? A few weeks passed and she became so hungry for the Rapunzel that she became ill. And her husband came home that night and found her being sick and asked her, what can I do to help you? And she said, there is only one thing. Rapunzel from the fairy garden. He couldn't go to the fairy garden. That was forbidden. But he had to save his wife. That night, he did it. Climbed the wall of the fairy garden, sneaked through the bushes, and grabbed one sprig of Rapunzel, hopped back over the wall, into the cottage, gave it to his wife. She made a great big salad, scoffed it down, went to sleep, woke up the next morning. She felt great. That night, she needed three times as much Rapunzel to feel the way she did the day before. Husband, back over the wall, into the garden, picks three sprigs of Rapunzel, and he goes to climb over the wall. He feels a tapping on his shoulder. He closes his eyes in fear of what this might be. Could it be the fairy? He turned around. There was no fairy. There was a witch. The witch asked the farmer, Who on this planet permitted you to steal the fruits of the fairy garden? And he explained, My wife, we're trying to become pregnant and the Rapunzel is all that can help and she's so ill, I need it to make her better and to save our child. The witch understood and she said, away you go, on you go. I totally get it. So he climbed the wall, just as he was putting his leg over the top. The witch called, oh, 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 before you go. One second before you go. See the um, child you mentioned? Well, I'll be having that in one year's time. The farmer thought, what, what? We might not even have a child. I have to save my wife. Yes, yeah, sure, sure, sure. You get the child, you get the child. Runs into the house and gives his wife the Rapunzel. And she became stronger by the day, feeding ever more on the magic plant. One day, the wife gave birth to a beautiful little baby girl. And no longer had three months passed than one year old around. T -t 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 goes the front door of the cottage. And in a story not worth repeating, the witch took the child, renamed it Rapunzel, and locked her in a tower with only three windows and no stair. All that Rapunzel had to do was sing across the enchanted forest, and as her hair grew longer, she would weave it into a golden ladder. And every morning the witch would turn up at the tower and shouted, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, for I need to climb thy golden stair. Rapunzel would take her hair, clip it onto a hook, and the witch would be wenched up. She would spend time with Rapunzel, teaching her 
the ways of the witches. And for months and months the witch would turn up. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, for I need to climb thy golden stair up and down and up and down. And as Rapunzel grew older and became one of the most beautiful maidens in all the land, one day a prince was riding through the forest just by the tower. And he heard the enchanted songs of the maiden trapped in the tower. And he saw her pass the window and fell instantly in love. He hid in the bushes and the witch approached one day. And he heard her say, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, for I need to climb the golden stair. The witch disappeared that night. Prince sneaked up to the tower. Guess what he shouted? Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair, for I need to climb thy golden stair. Rapunzel did think it was a bit unusual at night. The witch usually shows up through the day. However, she clipped her hair onto the hook, and the night got pulled up, and he got to the window. And Rapunzel was terrified. This was no witch. She had never laid eyes upon one of these creatures before. A man. A man. And my goodness, was he a man? Because when he left that night, he left behind something that could only have come from a man. Several weeks passed, and the witch was visiting Rapunzel. And Rapunzel, in a momentary lapse of reason, asked the witch a really stupid question. She said, Why is my waistband getting tighter? The witch sneered over the woman and said, You ungodly girl! You've been with man, and you're carrying a baby. You've broken the rules of the witches. You've gone against the teachings of the fairy woods. And now you will be cast to live in them. All of a sudden, the maiden found herself in the woods. It was dark, and she ran from the tower deeper and deeper into the woods. Until she became lost. That night, the knight creeped through the bushes. He returned to see his love. And he shouted, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The witch was there. And the witch, having cut off Rapunzel's hair before casting her to the woods, tied it to the hook, lowered it. The knight got hoisted up. And when he got to the window, he closed his eyes to embrace his love. My love, my love, carrier of my chip. He opened his eyes and it was the witch. The witch did the same to the knight as he did to the maiden. But in this instance, she threw the knight from the window. He landed in a thorn bush, and it took his eyesight. He became blind. And the knight, too, walked into the wild woods. And in the unpredictable darkness, stumbling around with no sight, using only his sense of smell, hearing, touch, and taste, he felt thirsty. And he stopped to drink a little forest stream. And as he bent down and cupped the water, as it touched his lips, he tasted something. And he smelled something on the water. And he followed the stream to the darkest, deepest part of the woods. And he heard something. Then he heard another voice. Sure, it was a voice, two voices, young, children possibly. 
and as he turned to the two voices, he felt an embrace. And then he heard the voice of Rapunzel. You have found me, even though blind, trapped in the heart of what turned out to be my magic woods. Here are your children. You bore to me. We are now a family. The prince blinded kissed his princess to be. And as he did, two tears rolled from her eyes and into his. And his sight was restored in totality. The knight, the maiden, the two children all rode back to the palace. And guess what? They all lived happily ever after. Ah, but what became of the witch? Well, she's still in the tower, right in the heart of the magic woods. And she's waiting for you, should you ever stray off the path and eat the forbidden fruits of the fairy garden. Thank you so much again for joining me on Clan Mythology. That was a great one, got right to the heart of the Rapunzel myth. Um, it's a myth that was told by the Grimm brothers in 1812. It was whitewashed, gentrified and made safe for children in 1837. But that was the original one. Um, the tale first originated in Germany in the early 16th century. But the one that we just shared was the one that was featured in Disney's Tangled. The story's loaded with archetypes for adults. Everything from sex out with wedlock to greed to lust and to blindness and of course being a Christian fairy tale underlying everything is the archetype of veering off the path of light and stepping into the old pagan ways the knowledge of the forests and the woods thank you so much for joining me again in clan mythology and we'll see you next week for another installment cheers <laughs>